Now here's an experiment that I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. I've often wondered whether the old 10-year-old naphtha, which some of you know is Coleman fuel, <coughs> works as well as a new, new naphtha. So I went on the internet, I've researched it as much as I can, and it just seems like, uh, well, it's like rectums. Everyone's got an opinion, and uh, none of them agree. I can't find anything reliable, so I'm just going to do it myself. And the best I can do is perhaps <clears throat> start with two brand new hand warmers. So they are theoretically the equivalent of each other. And then I've got my naphtha that's about probably 10 years old that I've been using. And then I had Shio must be obeyed when she went to the city, go to Walmart and pick me up a new bottle of naphtha or Coleman fuel, as you may know it. So I'm going to run a test using those side by side and see how the temperatures come up. And um, <clears throat> those of you who have watched my previous video may remember me telling you to use a meat thermometer and tape it to the hand warmer, which is still a good idea, but it was not a good idea on my part because when I was editing the video, she almost be obeyed, overheard it, and boy have I been paying the price ever since. Um, so I've had to go out and get my own Again, I don't recommend, I don't think you should use infrared on the metal, but this one, which I've picked up, has got a probe on it. And that's what I'll be using now. Anything with a probe will probably work. I would not recommend using your spouse's meat thermometer unless you want to end up like me. I had to sleep in my van for about three nights, and then on Christmas Day, we ate turkey at 11, because when I got home from work, she pointed out to me the turkey was not going into the oven until the expert inserted the probe from the meat thermometer because apparently she wasn't capable. And up to this day, n now no meat, no roast, nothing goes in the oven unless I put the probe in. That's going to be the legacy of my punishment for the rest of my life. So <clears throat> take my advice. <clears throat> Go out and get your own thermometer. <clears throat> these are great, these things with the probe on them. So I'm going to run off and fuel up these hand warmers in a place where it's safer and get them lit up and then once they're rolling we'll come back and do some temperature tests. So in order to keep things straight, because I am not the brightest bulb on the branch, I'm going to put the old naphtha in the yellow one which I've got marked with the yellow filler bottle and the new Coleman fuel which seems to have a slightly pinkish tint to it maybe that's something that they've added which will be an experiment in itself will go into the one that's marked red and I'm going to start these out and without the carbon fiber strip that we normally have in the top to see and then I'm going to extinguish it after I get a heat reading and then put the carbon fiber strips in and then go again and see how uh, that affects the heat range, see if it diminishes it at all. I don't expect the carbon fiber to increase the heat. What I do expect is carbon fiber to stop the cotton from getting charred and once it gets charred that glaze then creates an obstacle or a barrier to the evaporation of the fumes which will diminish your heat output over time. So I will get going with filling these up and then I will get them lit. While I'm waiting for them to warm up, they're both starting to get warm now, I might as well figure out how I'm going to insert this probe and I was thinking maybe sticking it into this hole for consistency and then bringing it down here 
so that the head of the probe is just tucked underneath there and then in order not to obstruct the oxygen flow tape the probe on like that and obviously I'll get a different temperature there than I would say here or here or if it's stuck between the tape and the surface interstitially but what we'll try and achieve here is consistency in doing our little experiment and again I'm gonna place them both upright while they're heating and then uh, we'll give them maybe 15 minutes or so to get themselves up to their heat level and then go from there it occurred to me I guess this would be a good opportunity to see how fast these get themselves up to an operating temperature the time I have right now is 8 minutes to 3 and you may not be able to read that display but it's 53.1 right now 53.2 it's 53.1 so it's kind of waffling back and forth and um, I'm just gonna wait and see we're in centigrade by the way so I'll probably should flip it over to Fahrenheit so it's consistent with the previous tests we did so uh, when I come back if I can figure out how to get this ersatz meat thermometer over into Fahrenheit uh, we'll go from there then so it's been three minutes it's now five minutes to three and I've switched it over to Fahrenheit and the Fahrenheit for the probe is that reading right there on the lower right the bigger one is just for the infrared cone which is not relevant here so 136 is the operating temperature that I got on the last hand warmers that I tested in the last video <clears throat> that included the Chinese peacocks and uh, the S Boston's they were all right around that 136 level and that was with also with the old fuel and the one we're testing right now is also the old fuel so I will give this oh another <clears throat> 5 or 10 because you can see it is still moving up it's 137 now so I'll give it an opportunity to get up there and we'll see where it tops out at and once we've topped out and we don't move for a few minutes we'll consider that to be max and then we'll move over to the new fuel version and see what we can get with that it's now five minutes after three and it's continuing to climb it's almost up to 150 now so we're still on the old fuel and uh, you might hear that beep in the faint background that's the timer going off telling me my latte is ready so I'm gonna go and pull a shot give this one another five and let it keep going until it peaks out so we're now a half hour into the experiment and we've been hovering right around the 159 mark now for about the last five actually I see it just hit 160 so I guess I'm gonna have to give it another five before I can assume that it's topped out so this is a lot of work for me I think I'm gonna have to go have a bacon lettuce and tomato and then come back and if this is carrying on I'm gonna have to take a nap well <clears throat> I'm back and it's now been about 50 minutes since we started the test and since the last reading I did manage to get off and make a BLT but <clears throat> the only bread I could find was raisin bread the lettuce was frozen in the bottom of the fridge so <clears throat> I guess if you're watching this from California you'd probably go oh that sounds yummy a BLT on raisin bread if you're living in New York you probably go geez this guy's a real Philistine and if you're living in Calgary you probably go typical Canadian he just gets on with it so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get on with it because we are in Canada <clears throat> we see 162.1 there but once it gets a chance to uh, <clears throat> do another reading 162.3 still looks like it's going up but I don't know if I can wait much longer 
I have this horrible taste in my mouth from that raisin bread. <clears throat> I guess the only way to get rid of that is maybe drink some scotch, but it's a little early for that too. <clears throat> so now we're getting up around 163. And I'm thinking how much longer can this go on? I just want to get it over with. So I think here shortly, I'll tell you what, we'll give it another five minutes just in case. It'd be pretty cool if we really did get up to 165, which I think is the max I've ever seen or ever seen reported for these things. <clears throat> I have little hope that the new fuel is going to make it any better. <clears throat> so, okay. We'll leave it for now. I promise you I won't go off and make any more inroads into the demographic that's normally controlled by she who must be obeyed and we'll see what happens here in another five so when we get to this part of the video I can usually say anything I want because I'm generally just talking to myself by now and uh, 162, 161 so <clears throat> I'm going to draw a line under it at that point for again this is the guy that is the old fuel and I'm gonna move the probe over to this guy which is the new fuel and then see what we've got from there so here we are about an hour and five minutes in and we've got 159.1 which about as about as high as I've seen it make it <coughs> while I've been monitoring it so I think we're going to call it there and uh, oh look at that it recorded 160 there when I just turned it on so roughly speaking it's almost the same with the new naphtha as there is with the old so was this a very scientific experiment no of course not it's not an ISO 9002 certified bench I'm sitting at However, I did try to do my best to make sure that everything remained constant. The uh, hand warmer was in the same spot, so if there's convection in my office, well, it should be the same convective flow in there. Nothing's changed in that regard. I haven't opened a window or turned on any fans. Both these bottles were brand new when I put the naphtha into them, so I doubt if there's anything in there that would have pre-contaminated them. Two new hand warmers and uh, the same probe and the same instrument that measures. So uh, I would say feel free to use your old naphtha. You don't need to go out and buy expensive and brand new Coleman premium blend fuel. Uh, any white gas naphtha is probably going to do the job for you. So this is rather interesting. I took the top off of the uh, one that was burning the old naphtha and I put in a carbon felt strip but so you can't see it but the cotton was still uh, looked normal it was white it hadn't started to char yet which is what I was looking for on this one there's an interesting reddish color that's developed and I don't know as I mentioned it's rather pink the uh, the fluid the Coleman premium blend and so I don't know if that's what it, the additives are in there that are causing that or not but it's just an observation so we're now about uh, two hours since we started I was busy in a meeting and uh, let's see where the one with carbon felt in it 156 basically so we, lose about four degrees from the carbon felt which doesn't surprise me um, so then the question be well why would I put the carbon felt strip in and it's very simple the charring uh, with the first S Boston I used for myself I used it about five times and the the cotton was charred and uh, then the temperature was dropping well below the 156 that we're seeing here now uh, 157 so uh, maybe you lose four degrees in the beginning with the carbon felt but overall as you move forward into the future you're probably going to retain 10 15 who knows 20 over time so you're either in it for the short term or the long term and um, 
if you're going to go through a whole season and use your hand warmer a lot, it's still looking like carbon felt is the way to go to protect your cotton and make sure that you do get that flow of fumes through. And because we know that the, um, again, this is the, the new one, or the new fuel, because it was the same as the old fuel, um, I'm not going to really get too worried about, I did carbon felt both of them. Looking at one, see when I do this bottom one here, it comes up, uh, the new one. Ah, they're both really about the same when you do what I say you ne should never do is use the infrared part of it. All right, that pretty much wraps up the S Boston and the old versus new naphtha experiment. If anyone is still watching, I'm amazed. This is Ron Tessellini. Um, Mr. Tessellini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> Trying to have a shower. We're taking water from Bryant Creek. We've never done this before. Larry Gilmore. Over 60 years of combined experience between these two gentlemen, and they've never done it before. 